how to treat and relieve sciatica. The sciatic nerve is a nerve that starts in the lumbar spine, which is in your lower back, and it extends down the back of your buttocks and leg into your foot, and, it mainly, and normally sciatica affects the left side of the body. The sciatic nerve is a mixed nerve, meaning it contains both sensory and motor fibers. And sensory means that it's feeling information or getting information from your body up into your brain. And motor fibers means it's sending information down into the muscles and tissues and organs of the body. And the sciatica, sciatic nerve does both nerves. Now, what is sciatica? Now, con contrary to popular belief or opinion, the sciatica is not really a condition, but refers to a set of specific symptoms that can be occurred when the sciatic nerve is being affected in a negative way. It's in any type of pain or any type of problem that can be felt as a response to a compression or pressure within the sciatic nerve. The sciatic nerve is, has a very extensive pathway, like I mentioned. It can not only affect those areas that I mentioned sensory, but it can also affect the muscles and tissues that go into the leg and even some muscle and some tissues into the lower back. Now, what causes sciatic pain? The sciatic nerve being exposed to uneven pressure either at its root source or any way along its pathway. And this uneven pressure is a result of causing it, causing it to become compressed, irritated, inflamed, or impinged in some way. Now, the most common place when this tends to happen is right at the nerve root when it exits the lumbar spine. Now, the sciatic nerve it gets its fibers from multiple areas within the lumbar spine. So it can't just be one bone out of alignment like L3 or L4. You have five lumbars and any of those five lumbars can actually can affect the lumbar nerves that affect the, like, which can lead to sciatica. Interesting is that this, these nerves also come from the spinal cord. So the spinal cord comes from your brain down your entire spine, exits out into the body. So really compression in any of those fibers throughout your spinal cord from your brain down to the lumbar spine can also lead to sciatic-like symptoms. So even patients having compression somewhere else that are affecting the nerves that go down and out through that area can affect it. So we look at the spine that anything above could possibly affect anything below because the nerves are, are going down and out when looking at any type of you know, motor or, or issue like you know, pain or weakness down into the body. That when this nerve is exposed to uneven forces, it has less space to function, therefore alterating, altering the way the nerve actually either senses information from the body or it sends information out. The most common symptoms associated with sciatica are very large because, like I said, the sciatica is a mixed nerve. It has motor and sensory components. So therefore, you can have just localized low back pain. You can have radicular pain down into the hip, into the into the buttocks, into the leg, into the foot. You can have burning, tingling sensations in the lower part of the body. You can have pain that, that, that intensifies during long periods of sitting or standing. You can even have weakness in muscles, atrophy, um, numbness into the lower part of the leg, into your, into your thigh. You can have shooting pains, and these pains can be very, very mild and can be very severe and anywhere in between. So sciatica is a very large host of symptoms, and it has a great variation in terms of how it presents with patients. And the most common cause of sciatica is something that's affecting the spine in the lower part. And what we tend to see is degenerative disc problems or, or in the lower back, like disc deterioration, where the, spine, where the disc actually change shape. It affects the surrounding vertebral bodies, and it affects the discs, it affects spinal alignment, and it affects the holes that the nerves exit, and this can lead to compression of the sciatic nerves exiting the lumbar spine. Lumbar spinal stenosis, uh, which is when only narrowing of the spinal canal or narrowing of the holes that the nerves exit, the spinal nerves exit into the body can also lead to sciatica. Spondylolisthesis is where the spine can either move in an anterior, called anterior spondylolisthesis, where the spine moves forward, or a posterior or retrolysis where the spine moves backwards relative to the bone above or below. This compresses the nerves and can lead to sciatica. And any type of condition that introduces uneven forces to the spine and surrounding muscles, this can literally be scoliosis, any type of loss of lordosis, any hyperlordosis, any of these issues can cause compression to these nerves, which can lead to sciatica. Now, not only can spinal alignment cause this, unfortunately, there could be some other conditions that can lead to uneven pressure. I mean, things like benign tumors and those kinds of things can affect the nerves. Anything that compresses the sciatic nerve can lead to sciatica. Now, how is sciatica treated? And the most common way of treating sciatic nerve pain 
is normally just with medications. They give you medications and they give you injections and they try to deal with whatever pain that you're feeling. And even though that most treatment plans should be very customized to the patient's condition, the causation, severity, and experience, and how much, how bad their symptoms are, the majority of times patients are just prescribed medications. Now, a more conservative approach, looking at how the spine is actually aligned, looking for causation, looks at trying to reposition the, the affected vertebra back into the right alignment. And normally this is done using very condition-specific chiropractic care, using types of either types of adjusting or rehabilitation or exercises to help restore the spine back into its normal alignment, reducing the uneven forces, allowing the spine, ner the, the spinal nerves to function more properly and give room for those nerves so therefore there's no more compression. When there's disc degeneration involved, a lot of times realigning the spine can help the disc stop degenerating, but then if you're also using spinal rehabilitation and therapies to help improve the disc, uh, disc health by improving the, how much hydration is in the disc, get the disc rehydrated, and allow the disc to repair properly, we can also improve sciatic as a result of disc degeneration. A lot of times therapy can be used and stretches can be used to help reduce some pain, but the goal thing here is to really address things on a structural level that are contributing to the sciatic nerve compression and normally by, remove, by addressing on a structural level and then stabilizing the spine, you really can deal with what's causing the sciatic pain at its root, as opposed to just dealing with the symptoms associated with sciatica. The sciatic nerve can, can lead to many different types of symptoms. It can be very mild pain to intermittent to chronic to almost debilitating where it, it, these people you know, uh, they can't like almost wheelchair bound. They can't even stand they're having so much pain. Here at Scoli's Reduction Center, we offer very proactive treatments to help deal with the causation factors associated with sciatica. And normally this tries to restore as much natural spinal function as well to prevent more invasive treatments like spinal fusions and surgeries. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.